today we are going to talk about graphs of functions. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify important information from a graph, and you should be able to state whether a graph is even, odd, or neither. First, let's take a look at this graph of f of x. We want to find f of negative 3. So, we need to go to negative 3 as our x value and see what the y value is. So f of negative 3 is negative 5. Then we also want to find f of 2. So that means our x value is 2 and we want to know what the y value is. So that is 5. For part b, we want to know is f of 1 positive or negative? So we go to 1 as our x value, and that is definitely a positive y value. Part C asks, when does f of x equal 0? So we want to look at 0 as our y value and see at what x values f of x equals 0. So if we look here, we have two points on the x-axis. Well, sort of. Here, at x equals negative 2, we see that the graph crosses the x-axis. At x equals 4, we have an open circle, which means that that point is not actually a point on the x-axis. So that means that f of x gets really close to the point for 0, but never actually reaches it. So at x equals 4, f of x does not equal 0. Our only answer for part c is x equals negative 2. Part d asks, when is f of x greater than 0? So we want to know when is the graph above the y-axis, or when are the y-values positive? Well, that is everything from here to here, so this interval. I'm going to write my answer in interval notation and say that between negative 2 and 4 is when the graph is positive. Now, you'll notice that I used parentheses for both endpoints. At x equals negative 2, the graph equals 0. So that point, x equals negative 2, is not in our interval for when the graph is greater than 0. E, we want to know what the domain is. If you remember from Algebra 2, when we ask for the domain, we are asking how far to the left does the graph go and how far to the right does the graph go. Well, on the left, the graph goes to negative 3. And on the right side, the graph goes to positive 4. Remember, we are looking for x values. I'm writing my answer in interval notation, so I need to be careful of my brackets and parentheses. Since we have a closed circle on the left side of the graph, I'm going to use a square bracket because that means that point is included. Since we have an open circle on the right side, I'm going to use a parenthesis because that point is not included. What is the range? Remember when you are asking for the range, you are looking for the y values. So you are asking yourself, how low and how high does this graph go? Well, the lowest that the graph goes is here at negative 5. The highest that the graph goes is here to positive 5. Since both of those points are closed points, I'm going to use brackets for both ends of my interval. Lastly, how many times would y equals 3 intersect 
the graph of f of x. So I can draw the line y equals 3. And you can see that this line would intersect the graph in two places. So the answer is twice. Now, that should have been a good review from Algebra 2. Let's go on to some new information. Even and odd functions. For an even function, f of x is even if and only if, and I'm going back to that notation from geometry, f of negative x equals f of x for all x in the domain. So an even graph could look something like this. It is going to be symmetric across the y-axis. For odd functions, f of x is odd if and only if f of negative x equals negative f of x for all x in the domain. So the graph of an odd function could look something like this. And odd functions have rotational symmetry around the origin. This means that if I put my finger on the graph at 0, 0 and rotated the graph 180 degrees, I would end up with the same graph. Now, we want to determine if each of these functions is even, odd, or neither. So, to determine that, we need to figure out what f of negative x is equal to. So for this first function, if I have f of x equals absolute value of x, I want to find out what f of negative x is equal to. So I'm going to plug negative x in for x. Well, we know that the absolute value of negative x is the same thing as the absolute value of x, which was our original function. So we have that f of negative x is equal to f of x, which means that this graph is even. For problem number two, we have g of x equals x cubed minus x. We need to figure out what g of negative x is equal to. So if we plug in negative x and simplify, we know that when you cube a negative number, you end up with negative x cubed. We have plus x here. If I factor out a negative, I end up with negative g of x, because this part in the parentheses is the same as our original function. So, since g of negative x is equal to negative g of x, that means that this function is odd.
problem number three. We have h of x is equal to x cubed minus 5. So if we find h of negative x, we end up with negative x cubed minus 5. Well, that is not the same as our original function. And if I try to factor out a negative, that is not the same as negative h of x. So that means that this is neither even nor odd. Lastly, we have k of x equals x squared plus 1. So we need to find k of negative x. So if I plug that in, when you square a negative, you get a positive answer. So I get x squared plus 1, which is the same as k of x. So since k of negative x equals k of x, this is even. Next, let's take a look at local or relative maxima and minima. You should have talked about these a little bit in Algebra 2. Local maxima are these high points of a graph. It is where a graph changes from increasing to decreasing. Local minima are low points in the graph where the graph changes from decreasing to increasing. Now, let's take a look at an example. We have w of x equals negative x cubed plus 2x. We want to find the local maxima and local minima. As of now, the only way that you know to find these is using a graph. When you get to calculus, you'll learn how to find the maxima and minima algebraically. So let's take our graphing calculator and look at the graph. So if we go to y equals, we have negative x cubed plus 2x. So if we graph this, let's sketch down that graph. So that's approximately what our graph looks like. If we want to find the exact maximum and minimum, we need to use our calculators for that. So if you go to second trace, you can say calculate the maximum. So I know that my maximum is between 0, so I'm going to click enter, and 2. And then I'm going to guess, and it tells me that my maximum is 0 0.816, 1.089. So I'm going to round to three decimal places. Then I can do the same thing to find the minimum. Second, trace, minimum. I know that my minimum is between negative 2 and 0. So I have my minimum. We can also tell from this graph and from this information about the maximum and minimum that this is probably an odd graph.
because when I plugged in the negative x value, I ended up with the negative y value. Lastly, let's look at the official definitions for increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals. We say that a graph is increasing if and only if f of x1 is less than f of x2 for all x1 less than x2. So if we look at this graph given here, we can see that the graph is increasing on that portion of the graph, which is from negative 6 to negative 1. So I'm going to write my intervals in interval notation. So from negative 6 to negative 1. Now, notice that I put parentheses on both endpoints. When we are doing increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals, we will never use brackets. And that is because at a specific point, so for example, at x equals negative 6, that point itself is neither increasing, decreasing, or constant. It is just one point. It has to be increasing over an interval. So we will never include our endpoints. We know that f of x is decreasing if and only if f of x1 is greater than f of x2 for all x1 less than x2. So on this graph, it is decreasing from this point and continues on. So this point here is about 3.5. and it will continue on to infinity. Just another reminder that when we are writing increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals, we only write the x values. We never write the y values. Lastly, f of x is constant if and only if f of x1 equals f of x2 for all x1 less than x2. So on this graph, it is constant in this section of the graph from negative 1 to 3.5. Now, note also that this graph has no local minimum or maximum because it never changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. There's that constant interval in the middle that breaks it up so we do not have a maximum or a minimum. Lastly, let's look at two examples here. We want to state where each function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Again, right now you only know how to do this from a graph. When you get to calculus, you'll learn how to figure this out without a graph. So, let's go to our graphing calculator and type in our function. We have x cubed minus 3x. So let's sketch this graph. Now, we can see that this graph goes from increasing to decreasing to increasing. There are no constant intervals. We need to know the x value for the maximum and the minimum. So we can do what we did on the previous problem, where we do second, trace, minimum, and maximum. But for now, I'm just going to tell you that this point is negative 1, 2, and this point is 1, negative 2. 
So our graph is increasing on the intervals negative infinity to negative 1 and 1 to infinity. Remember, when we're writing things in interval notation and we have multiple intervals, we need to include the union symbol. Then we have that the graph is decreasing from negative 1 to 1. We can also assume from this graph that this graph is probably an odd function. Lastly, let's look at our final graph. We have y equals x cubed. Now, for this graph, it increases and continues to increase. So let's sketch our graph. Since this graph is increasing always, we will just say that it is increasing from negative infinity to infinity. And there are no decreasing or constant intervals.